All right, moving on to page two of the document. We're still in the section of writing. Notice this has got 10 individual points about writing. Then after that, we've got, what do we do after we wrote? So as we're writing, we also have to think about this. We have to think about headings. Take advantage of heading one, heading two, etc. They are useful for breaking up a wall of text into readable sections and help the search engines understand your content. Understand your content. So what this is, use the right tag or formatting for the right task. The heading tag is for headlines. The paragraph tag is for regular text. We've got, other, we've got a couple of other formattings or, or stylings. Um, a tangible example is um, is on my syllabus, but uh, if you have the syllabus handy, um, this document also sort of relies on that. Let me zoom out a lot right here. You can't read anything, but do you see that something stands out here as a section with a headline? Something stands out over here with a section as, as a headline, and at the top as well. At the very top also, there seems to be some sort of headline that delineates what the whole document is, and I see some kind of headline there as well. We cannot read it, but we can see that it's broken up into sections. So obviously zooming in to read, I see a headline of planning, I see a headline of writing, and I see a headline of promoting. That's what this is about, headings do that. Break up your content, not just a big wall of text, but how can you write a heading with a word or a simple sentence that breaks up your whole 100 words or 500 words into chunks, into sections. Because again, um, we, a lot of us, it's not that we don't care or, or, or have a bad attention span, it's that we have a lot to do. I need to do this throughout my day, and I'd like to read this article, but as soon as I look at it and it goes on and on and on, maybe I'll start two paragraphs and never finish. But if I've got a big article to read and they have taken the time to divide it into sections, they might not read everything word by word, but then they jump to the section that they would care most about and read that and consume that, and that's a win for you. So use the right tag like headings for the right element. I'll show you an example right here. I like to visit this site often. It's called InvestorJunkie.com. I like to read about investing in finance and such. InvestorJunkie.com. And their purpose is that they're going to sell you their financial services. Sure. But they're going to give a lot about education for free. They've called it education and articles rather than blog, and that's fine. You don't have to use the keyword blog, really. But all of these things are articles, blog posts. If I go look at articles, there's a heading right here. The whole page is called articles, and there's links. Then there's a heading, alternative investments. I don't care about that. Asset allocation, I don't care about that. Bonds, fixed income, oh, I care about that. It's a section that I do care about to read. Headings, we will see when we get hands-on in WordPress how to do that. But there's all of these sections that I would be interested about. Entrepreneurship. This is, again, organization. Um, and I like to, re to mention this, I don't have any affiliation with this site, but I, I like the content of the site, because this also can give you a lot of inspiration of what kind of articles to write. Maybe you're not really writing about investing, but again, three must-have investment tools for a tech-savvy investor. Um, seven financial lessons I've learned from investing. Someone searching for financial lessons. Seven financial lessons I learned. I'm looking for uh, what are the best online brokers? Keyword, seven great apps from online brokers. 
So most likely I'm going to pick one at random. Six important things to consider before investing. There's the main headline, that's a heading one. There's a little bit of text. Then there's another section, make sure you can live on your paycheck. So okay, I'll read that. Have some money set aside that you set aside that you be in have some money set aside that you be invested. Hmm. The editor didn't catch that there. Uh, keep your debts to a minimum. So again, I would jump to the spot here, educate yourself. Okay, what's that about? So I read that. It's short chunks of information. The whole thing is probably 500 words or something. And I might not read every single word, but I'm going to read the ones that I care most about. And again, as we look at the rest of the handout, they're also engaging in all of these other techniques that we'll talk about, such as internal links and further keeping the person reading more of their articles. That's another link to another one of their articles. We'll talk about um, internal links in a bit. But I'm focusing here on headings, dividing your content into sections, digestible chunks of information. If the content is good enough, it shouldn't matter. I, that, those sorts of things will fall by the wayside. I want to keep reading more, and it doesn't quite matter that there's like a double space there. Mm -hmm. Visually, perhaps, yes, you might have noticed that right away. If I have an interest on this topic, I'm not going to notice it. Right. So this would be some design aspect that then this website should deal with, maybe to tighten up that spacing a little bit, but that doesn't detract from the content and from using headings. Lastly, what I'll say about headings is search engines love headings. If your content is just a big wall of text, but your competitor's article, similar, is broken up into chunks with headings, your competitor will rank higher, most likely, because the search engine saw that person is using headings. They've divided their content. They've created readable content. They've tried harder than this one that just wrote everything stream of conscious. This other one that broke it up into sections uh, is a little bit more pleasant to read, and therefore let's show it to more people. So that's one that I kind of do recommend maybe to go back. That's kind of a little bit of an easier one. If you've already written 10 articles, I would think about this one. Go back to those 10 articles and see if you can divide it up into one or two sections. Maybe even simply add conclusion at the bottom. Because sometimes people want to read all everything. But if you summarized it on your last paragraph or two, and there's no indicator that you did, well, they won't have any clue to read. But if you at least go back and wrote conclusion, people will maybe jump to that, get what they need out of it, and move on. And maybe they'll read it and say, it's really good. Let me go back and see what I missed in detail. So we'll see it's really easy to add that when we get into WordPress. <clears throat> the next one. Lists. Either bullet point lists or numbered lists are useful because they create bite-sized pieces of content that people can consume easier. Your title might derive from the type of list you've written. The top three best WordPress tutorials. The top six investor pitfalls. The top 42 restaurants. Any number doesn't matter. This relates to previously about the planning of writing. So related to planning when writing. Any number for a top X list. Style of post. Top 5x, yes. I would guess the search engine to recognize lists kind of like that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's one of the reasons why we would engage in this, because it helps divide up your content a little bit more meaningfully for the search engine. So uh, the search engines still prefer the headings a bit more, but still these, these links are very useful to organize your content. 
top five best uh, hosting providers. The best for childcare uh, businesses in Chula Vista. Someone might be searching for that. Maybe not the best whatever, but the best four, the best five. But they're searching for the best child care providers in San Diego. Guess what? I wrote an article with that variation of that headline. Um, you can do conversely. The seven worst mistakes you can make in, with WordPress. So top whatever, bottom whatever, best whatever, worst whatever, whatever number. Just some sort of list. Based on that title, then I'm going to write my 100 words, and within the actual document, we'll see it in WordPress, we can, we can select it so that it's bullet points, so we can select it so that it's numbers. And that, of course, again, uh, serves to help break up the monotony of a wall of text, makes it more readable and digestible, more pleasant for people to read. And search engines look at all of that. Well, how can they look? How can they understand if something is pleasant to read? They can understand it in terms of length of time someone reads your, your article. If someone is spending 10 seconds on your page, that means it wasn't what they wanted. If they're spending a minute on your page, it means they're reacting to it or they're reading it. It matters to them. If they're spending five minutes and you wrote 500 words, it means they're reading your 500 words. So the search engines can keep track of so much stuff and make it easy for people to, and interesting for them to read, of course, is very, very important. Okay, here's the one about links. Relevant internal, a relevant internal link to your own blog post on your own site is helpful for keeping people on your site longer. A link to an external link, that's someone else's site, is helpful when trying to get backlinks. And when setting external links, remember to make them open in their own tab. So to break that down, internal link, a link from one of your posts to another of your posts, another of your relevant posts. We've got already the goal that we're going to write a series of articles. So I've already built up two articles of recipes and three articles of how-to's and one article of a, of a spotlight. So when I'm going to write a brand new article about another how-to, I might write it in one of my paragraphs somewhere about, and if you enjoyed our how to bake the best pecan pie, don't forget to read it, and a link back to that other article. They've read my this one article, I can then have a link to my other article to keep them reading more of my articles. So uh, internal links help keep people on your site longer. The longer they're on your site, the more Pos pr probable, the more potential for them to, the more potential they complete um, they complete the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of Aquí es Texcoco, that Mexican food restaurant client we have, the ultimate goal of that website is to sell food or book a table. So the longer they're on the website, the more possibility that they click buy now or book a table. The goal of my own personal blog about comic books is, ultimately, perhaps, to get a little revenue from what I write.
So the longer they stay on my site, the more possibility they might click on an ad for me to profit. If I am that investor website, the longer they, they stay and read these many, many articles about investing and get comfortable with this, but then want a professional to manage it, the more possibility they click the button that says hire us. So whatever the goal of your website is, the longer you keep someone on the site, the more possibility is that they complete that ultimate goal, whatever you decide your ultimate goal is of your site. So as I said here, um, there's this article about six important things to consider before investing and I'm reading all about this and it says dollar cost averaging is one of the best ways to move into the market gradually. That sounds interesting. Tell me more. There's a link there. So I'm going to click on that and there's a whole article here why dollar cost averaging works. Again, look at that keyword. Someone's going to search for does dollar cost averaging work? Here's an article that it could appear. Bullet points. There's a lot to read, but I'm going to jump right to the bullet points. Don't have too much money to invest. Do not want to take too large of a risk. Okay, I'm getting the info that I want. This one says, this guest post is contributed by Omar Adams. Right there, guest writer. You have to be careful about internal links, though. I want to say, um, how many? One to three internal links. Three is already pushing it, depending on how much content you have. Um, if you don't have very much content and you're trying to put three internal links, you're just going to link too much to the same thing. If you can fit in one link on an article to another article, that's fine. Zero links is fine also, because as we look at another item later on, there's another way to get people to stay to have people stay on your site longer. But here's a, a tangible or conscious way for you to have people look at more of your stuff. So too many, then it kind of looks a little spammy. I don't know if the search engines say, well, if you've got more than four links on a 500 word article that's bad. I don't know that. I think that's also proprietary trade secrets. You should be pretty safe one to three links. Another caveat is try to add external, I mean uh, try to add internal links near the end of your article. If right away on the first paragraph or two you've got a link there and someone clicks it well, they didn't finish reading your original article. They've been distracted and they're off somewhere else. That may or may not be so bad because maybe they read that other article and that's where they click by now. You don't know. I would recommend try to add these external links a little bit later, halfway or near the end, halfway through your article or near the end of the article so they've already read and digested some of it. These, of course, are rules are made to be broken because notice the investor junkie one has lots of links, oftentimes early on. This one doesn't have any external link, any any other internal links. But this one, uh, almost right away, it had a bunch of links. The first sentence. So I'm going to go read that and never finish this one. Um, if it's good enough content, yes, I'm going to come back and read it or read it and then click the links. You don't know what your your reader is going to be like. We'll talk about external in just a moment, but I should say, try to add internal and external near the end, both of them. We'll, we'll specify external in a moment, but make note that either or of those, if you're adding them to your articles, try to add them near the bottom, near the end, so that again, they, they digest this article right now as much as possible and then have something more to read. What I'm about to say here next also applies to internal and external links. When linking, 
make the link meaningful. So think in terms of keywords. Even your link, sometimes they call it anchor text, even the link that you are activating to go somewhere else, even that can be a keyword. So I'll say it like this. Bad. You've got something that you've written and it says click here. And the word click here is an active link. That's bad. Good is emergency fund. A meaningful word or phrase is the active link. That's much better. It's very common for people to write, like in this article right here, for beginning investors, the best place for this cash is in an emergency fund. Click here to read more. And they made click here active link. That's bad. They made the link a keyword. And that's clickable. That's much better. Because the search engine, the reason for this is the search engine looks at all of the links on a page, extracts the link, and looks at its meaning. And so if your link is simply click here, read more, uh, you know, click, tap here. If it's something very generic like that, that has no meaning. Click here can work on a financial website, can work on a bakery website, can work on a Mexican food reds website, therefore it has no meaning. Click here has no meaning. Emergency fund only works on a financial website. It doesn't work on a bakery website. It doesn't work on a food website. So make the link text meaningful. Think in terms of keywords. external link a link from your site to another site in order to get backlinks backlinks aka inbound links incoming links links to your site. One of the many factors that the search engines look at when ranking you is how many backlinks are there to this site. Think about it like this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a financial... I'm a CPA, uh, an accountant, and uh, there's another one down the street. We both have a website. We both offer the same services. We both built a website last year. How will the search engine... We both blog. How will the search engine decide which is better if everything is so similar? One possible way is, well, company A has seven links coming to it, and company B has two. The one with seven inbound links could help it get could help it rank higher. The one with more links coming to it is, could be more meaningful because the logic behind that is the content on that site is so good other sites are linking to it. Like that Wheat La Coche article. If I look into the stats in WordPress it'll tell me all of the sites that are linking to it and there's, there's a good amount. A lot of other sites when they write about Mexican food they write what they think La Cocha is, and they give credit back to our article on Wheat La Cocha. So that's a backlink, and the search engine see that, and it's very valuable. Yes? Does that work as simply as even placing our own web address on our social media page? Not as much, because if you're, if you're just putting your web address, it's going to go to the home page. I'm saying here, I want traffic to individual pages, individual articles. Okay. So yes, you could tweet, 
your own link to your own article? That helps. But what if someone else tweeted it? What if three other people tweeted it? And then what if someone else retweets it and reshares it? That's much more meaningful than you yourself showing off your own links. That's valuable, of course. But when other people vouch and link back to you, that's much more valuable. Yes? Can you make an external link? It create, does it, that actually create a backlink, or do they have to return the favor consciously? They have to return the favor. That's so it's better to call them up and talk to them ahead of time? And no? Not. not that it's better or worse, but um, obviously, if that if you ask them to link back to you, okay, you have a you have a link. But what makes it harder is that the search engines don't value that as much. Asking for a link is not as useful because spammers can make a network of links all together, and so we are not going to ask for links. The technique here is that I'm writing something and I'm linking to someone else's site and my site is WordPress and if their site is WordPress my site will alert them you've got a new link so they will become conscious that I exist and they may link back. May link back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily help you to after you set the link and you don't see that they have linked back for you to contact them personally and say, um, I guess there's no advantage to them for linking back to you unless... Unless you have good content. That's why they would link back to you. Not simply because they want to build a link, they want to engage in a link building scheme. The reason someone linked back to you is because you have something worth linking to. Okay. So I'm not just going to write an article and put a bunch of links to it and expect links to get to come back. Again, that's a spam technique. I'm going to write an article that is meaningful right here. I'm going to write an article about finance and I'm going to make that an active link linking to some other financial website. Yes, ultimately I'm trying to get a backlink. It may not happen, but I didn't lose a lot. I didn't lose any sleep really engaging in that. And what the result could be great. The, re the result could be that that other website then links back to me or gives me three backlinks. So I would call this technique <clears throat> um, might not be the best term, but fishing for backlinks. Write an article, link to one other website related to your topic of your article, link to another website, that alerts them to your site. They may link back. Backlinks are very valuable for ranking. So yes, there's a lot of faith you have to put into this. And really, you might get 10% results. That's still better than zero results. I'm not I'm doing everything, but I'm not doing I'm not getting any backlinks. That tells the search engine your content is not valuable enough. No one is linking to it. These articles that we write for these clients, um, some other food website links to it, the Union Tribune might link to it, uh, a food blogger links to it, uh, another Mexican food restaurant links to it. I'm getting links from other sites because we can think about it this way. If you had to write in a big article in, in a class, if you, if you had to write a 10-page article on something, if you have to do a research paper on something, you have to have a works cited page. You most likely did not invent all of that knowledge to write 10 pages. You probably read a lot of articles, synthesized it to your own thoughts, put it in the bibliography and turned it in. In college, if you try to turn in a 10-page paper with no bibliography, it's an automatic F. You plagiarized everything. You didn't make this up. You're, you're not a genius. You might be, but you still most likely got some knowledge from other people. You have to cite it in a bibliography. That journal that you wrote, that you read, bolstered your point so much, you used it in your article. Regarding blogging, your blog was so good, people linked to it. Other people actively chose 
to link to you. If they don't know you exist, how do they know to link to you? Well, I'm going to first link to another company, they will get alerted to it, and now they'll know I exist. Uh, best case scenario, they see that, and then they move on and don't link you back. That's not terrible. Best case scenario, they link you back. One link, three links, 20 links, who knows? There's really no, no loss except perhaps a couple of seconds of time in linking it. That's much more of a better trade-off than not doing it, where you might not get any results of backlinks. Yes? Can, uh, can you deny someone's link, like if they try to link to your site and then you feel like it's not really relevant to what you're talking about, can you deny that they even do that? Yes, um, you can't stop the link, but what you can do via the search engine is a process called disavow links. So, uh, good, okay, so relevant, external, links back to your site. Great. Irrelevant external links. Bad. Because in the old days, what a spammer would do is buy 10 domains. Victorspets.com, Victorsbakery.com, uh, victorsdogwalkers.com, blah, 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 and link all three of them together. Wow, look at all these backlinks, <laughs> but of irrelevant sites. What does the dog walking website have to do with the bakery website? Nothing. They're irrelevant. But the spammers would do that because in the old days, the search engines would simply count the number of links, and that would rank you. But then the spammers figured out, okay, I'm going to make 40 links here. And they sell software, backlink building software, that will point a hundred websites to you. And in the old days, that was great. But now the search engines can scan a thousand websites in half a second, so they'll see the trick. And so irrelevant external links to your site, you linking to an external irrelevant site is bad, and getting backlinks back to you that are irrelevant are bad. Well, um, if uh, if you get if you get external backlinks, uh, do the this avow process. We're not really going to get to it in this class at all. It's the SEO class. But look into what. How do you disavow links? Sorry, do the disavow links process. Uh, look up how to disavow links in Google, how to disavow links in Bing. Those are the two big search engines. And you'll see how to do it. But basically, you're going to tell Google and Bing, do not pay attention to these links. Do not pay attention to these bad spam links. Because if you don't do it, uh, if you don't disavow, unfortunately, the search engines really behave nowadays in, in the philosophy of guilt by association, guilty until proven innocent, shoot first, ask questions later. Um, if a bunch of bad spam sites link to your site, the search engine is going to categorize you as a spam site. You're hanging out with a bunch of spam sites, unless you go through the process of disavow. I know them not, so you have to disavow links. How to do it? You have to look it up. What bad links am I getting? You have to take the SEO class where we talk about Google Analytics and all of that. Question? Can you give an example of you've got a WordPress site and somebody else does, and you got their spam and you get a message? If you have an independent Bing server, do, they, do you get the same kind of notification, or that's just the same platform? Um, if, if someone has a WordPress site, either on WordPress.com or externally on WordPress.org, this is pretty automatic. And because 25% of the world's websites are WordPress, most of the time a website linking to a website via WordPress, will this, work, will this will work just fine. The competitors like Weebly and Wix and all of that, Blogspa Blogspot and such, they have a version of it, so it should still work. Um, but it's kind of automatic behind the scenes. So going back to the question about, well, can we ask and contact the other company? The search engines prefer that you don't, because that's a link-building scheme. That's collusion. I'm saying, you link to me, I'll link to you. 
So that's not as valuable to the search engines. This way that we're saying here, write something, link to someone else, and if they have the system that will understand that, then good. If they don't, just move on, write some more articles and links, just move on. That's why I call it back here, phishing for backlinks. It's not as simple as just walking into the grocery store and buying that salmon. You have to go fish for that salmon, and sometimes you don't get a salmon. So, you have to try. It's still good to have them, though, even if they don't think mm -hmm. back as quickly. Yeah, and that's why I, I say, you know, one... I said one to three of your internal ones, but then for external, be careful about that one because that one can be spammy if you've got seven links to some other website. If I'm trying to run the numbers and I'm going to try to gamble by linking to seven different sites because maybe one of them will link back to me, that's detrimental because why are you linking to so many sites? You're trying to run, to, to run the game. So that was a big one, links. Last thing here, when we get into WordPress, we'll see how to do it, but if you link to someone else's site, it should open in its own window or tab. The default is that you make an external link, and it opens in the same web browser window. The problem with that is that if I'm reading this article, and I click on this article, and it stays in the same address, see this is an external one, and if I were to click on it and it goes to that external one and then, okay, I'm done with that article and I close that, I closed everything. Mm -hmm. If we set up the way of a, of a, if we set up the way of um, creating um, items in their own tab, then a new tab opens up and uh, whatever they look at over there, like this, the daily finance. I click here, it went off to a completely different site. I saw in the address here, it's going to go off to dailyfinance.com. I'm at investorjunkie.com. This goes off to a completely different website in its own tab. When I read this article and I'm done with it and I like it, I'm done with it, I close that, I'm still back on the original article. Can you and should you do that with your internal links as well? No, nope. not with your internal links really, because I think they, yeah, they don't do it here. Good. With their own internal links, they don't do that because in this case, there's a lot of internal links. That'd be opening lots of tabs. You'd have lots of stuff up here and confusing people and slowing down their computer because every new tab is more memory being used on their computer. So if every one of your links opens a new tab, you're sucking up all their memory. So for, we'll say, internal links, internal links, same tab or window, external links, new window or tab. And we'll learn how to do that under the SEO class? No, we'll learn how to do that in this oh, class in WordPress cool. when, we, when we get to that. It'll just be basically a little check mark we turn on, but we need to see it in the software and we'll get to that soon. Okay, here's one um, that people forget a lot, especially when, when uh, starting off writing organization. Set up categories, tags, and author pages. Use categories as the largest organizational unit. So in Victor's Bakery, I'm writing articles about cakes pies and cookies. Uh, I have seven articles on cakes, two on pies, 12 on cookies. And use tags as the fine-tuned organizational units, meaning chocolate, sugar-free, birthday. And it's often kind of hard to explain the difference between the two because they kind of feel like they bleed into each other a lot. Hopefully this kind of helps explain it because I can have a tag of chocolate, meaning I write an article about chocolate chip cookies chocolate pie and chocolate birthday cake. Obviously the chocolate chip cookies article is in the cookies category, but if I also tag it with chocolate, if someone is in my site and searches chocolate, it will pull up everything tagged chocolate. The chocolate chip pie article, 
the chocolate chip cookie article, the chocolate pie article, the chocolate birthday cake article. If someone searched cookies, it'll only show the cookies. And yes, this will make more sense when we do it. To make it easiest, think in terms of categories. Both are valuable, but until we actually do it, maybe don't engage in it just yet because it's very easy to kind of get off track. When should I use tag? When should I use category? I find it kind of hard to explain when I teach this, so it's better to see it when we, when we get to it. Um, the whole point, though, is organization. The search engines like that. Develop a set of categories, topics, that you will write about. Categories, topics, themes. The, the technical term in WordPress is categories. You can think about them as topics or themes. When we were talking about planning to what we're writing about, I have the idea up here about testimonial articles. I can make a category called testimonials. So every testimonial, testimonial article that I write is set as the testimonial category. So when someone searches in my website or from Google and they search the keyword testimonials, all testimonial articles will show up. Develop a set of them. I kind of like to do this up on the planning part of it. What five or six or seven uh, different categories can I write right now and then think about writing those articles? For the Texcoco client, we have these categories under beverages, under um, lamb dishes, under different things. So we write articles based on those categories, and they're all grouped together. And that organization is much better compared to another website that's exactly the same but did not organize. Mm -hmm. The search engine will see that and say, well, let's rank this one higher because they care more. They organize. Maybe not that they care more, but that they know more and tried harder compared to this one that all of their posts are uncategorized. The default WordPress category is uncategorized. I'll say here, as soon as possible, remove uncategorized category. Everyone on WordPress that makes a brand new WordPress, everyone gets the category uncategorized. Therefore, it's meaningless. Everyone's using it. All the beginners are using it. You're gonna, you're not gonna be a beginner as soon as possible, and so you're gonna remove category, or rename category, rename it to something else, miscellaneous or something. But don't don't leave your don't leave all your articles uncategorized. That's not going to help your SEO. So that would be like a, what, a page, the one you top on your, you have your description, homepage, about me, testimonials, contact. You're not going to have one that says blogs, for example. It would be articles, testimonials, advice. Uh, it's up to you. There's no, um, there's no right or wrong answer, but I think it'll make more sense once we do it because you could show your categories on your screen like you're saying you could have them in a searchable box you could have it let's see if I can find the example here I think they have it at the end of that the article have them listed in bullets and they were all links all the categories uh, no I thought I saw that. no if we look at an actual article here's an article and here's the category and here's the tag so this particular article is in the category of investing. If I go look at investing, all of the articles about investing show up right here. There's an article about diversification. There's a tag, I mean. If I click on diversification tag, all of the articles about diversification show up. So I don't, I don't see the diversification link here. I don't see the, in, the investing category. You can if you want, but then you're going to have a very a lot here and a lot in the menu, a lot of clutter. It's here a little bit more judiciously in that I, I read a particular 
Um, you can think about it in this terms as well. Okay, these could be also categories, sure. So they can be very visual, very obvious, or they can be a little bit more subdued. If I go look at buying gold online, let's see which one it has here. It has commodities. There's no commodities bullet point. But if there's articles that mention commodities, it's been tagged with commodities. The main category is alternative investments, which are all of the ones in this section. REITs, REITs or rates, I don't know how people say in, in the real world, REITs. Um, real estate. So that's in alternative investments. If I look into that one, the category is alternative investments. But then the tags, dividend income, passive investment, real estate investment trusts. Yes? Can we, oh, I see how we can, I was going to say, can they search specifically for something? Um, but I see that they, they can do that there. We can do that also, huh? Yeah, one of the great things about WordPress is it has a built-in search oh, feature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the old days, making a website and you wanted to have search, you had to go through a bunch of hoops, but now WordPress built-in has the ability for people to search within your site easily. And better yet, if you help them by making categories and tags, people can find your content. Let's see if I can show another example. So from my own comic blog, I write these different articles. So here's one. What's it like to go to San Diego Comic-Con? And this has got the tags of Comic-Con and cosplay, and the category of Comic-Con. And again, this is why sometimes it's difficult. Well, you have it here twice. What, what's that about? One's a tag, one's a, one's a category. Either or helps you, but think of categories as the larger concept. Any article about video, that's, that's that right there. So all articles with, with a category of video show up here. All articles about costumes, about cosplay, show up right here. So, uh, here's this one's also about video. So, whatever way you're going to um, organize your content, that's the big idea here organization. That helps you get found by the search engines as well. You tried harder, you know what you're doing compared to the competitor. Sorry, going back a step to the links, I saw that you, instead of you writing the whole article, you have like a little snippet and then you continue reading. Yeah. Does that help for your internal links to, to kind of do that? It's not, it's not really a reason about internal links. It's about accessibility and usability for your readers. The default is that WordPress will throw your whole article up for someone to read. So that means they're going to need to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll to find the next article. Mm -hmm. A better thing would be to show a snippet, and we'll see how to do it later, to show a little snippet that if they're interested, I will continue reading. Okay. So that's not quite related a lot to SEO. It's more for people, do they want to read this one? Then I will click read more. Do they want to read that one? Then I'll read more. If they don't want to, they'll move on. But the default is WordPress will show everything. And therefore, you're going to keep scrolling a long time. And then they're going to zone out. Where is the next article starting? They might miss it because there's so much to scroll past. With author pages, you are establishing authority in a subject and putting a human face behind the words. Plus, all her posts will be linked together. The author's posts will be linked together. What I'm saying here, this works especially like over here on Investor Junkie. They have various people contributing articles. Larry Ludwig um, wrote this. I'm able to click Larry's name and I get the author page. Larry has his own page on this website where they've allowed him to write a little bio, have his own links back to his own site where he is contributing to this one. He's contributing to this popular site. He's piggybacking on some popularity to get traffic back to his site. That's related to a topic we'll get to in a bit where you can become a guest writer. I mentioned previously about you having guest writers to help you write. Later, in a moment, we'll talk about why you might be want to become a guest writer. At the very least, on your own site, 
if you um, if you if you have your own articles, I don't have it on mine because I'm the only one writing here. But if I had multiple people contributing, well, I can show over here actually. This other website, rsconline.com. This is a comic shop, and I contribute articles here to the blog, and I get my credit here on their site. So I'm contributing to build content for their own site, and when people search the keyword, the, the Doctor Strange movie is going to come out soon that I wrote here. Should I read Doctor Strange, the comic book? Someone searches for that, I write about it here, they could find this result, and then the this website gets traffic. But then, because I have my own author page here, all of what I've written here appears here, and I'm building a, um, a, a following, or I'm building a a, an authority. Uh, I'm creating content on someone else's site, piggybacking on their uh, on their popularity. So WordPress gives you the ability to uh, create this author page. We'll, we'll see this. Uh, and the point of that is establishing authority on a subject. This may or may not matter to you, depending. Like if I am my own business, and I'm also the face of my business. If I'm the realtor, obviously I'm the face of my own business. So I want to create content so when someone searches for Victor Campos Realtor, and they can look me up, they'll see all the stuff that I've written, all the stuff that I've created online. I'm on my own site, and I'm on these other realty websites. I'm bolstering my presence, my brand. If I'm a person, though, in a large company, if I'm yet another Century 21, um, realtor, or if I'm if I'm yet another um, engineer at Qualcomm, well, my own presence in Qualcomm is not as important as the whole Qualcomm company, and so the author page might not be as valuable. It depends on what you're trying to do online. And we've got read more. On your blog page, only include a snippet of the post, perhaps with an image, and the option for people to read more, also known as continue reading. On the post itself, set up a way to re for related posts. So I'm showing right here, nice big picture. There's the keyword of the title, when it was written, a snippet. This particular theme it's going to depend on the theme. It shows it here, read more, but it didn't show it on the other on the other screen apparently. But if they're interested in this one, it's not the full usually usually I write 300 words for them here once a month. Um, it's not the whole 300 words. It's enough to make you think, okay, after reading this, should I read more? Let's see if I get convinced. So then I click to read more. And the whole article appears. And we'll see in WordPress how to do that, because the default would have shown everything here. And they read the rest. Look at that, it's got some of these headings. Uh, it's got some links. This is another way to fish for these backlinks. These comic book artists and writers link me to them. People like to get their ego stroked. Here's an article that's positive about their comic book. So linking to the creators of the comic books, Jason Aaron might then tweet and say, thank you for that article. And now his 10,000 followers or whatever um, come and read this article, more traffic to the site. What's the, point of, what's the point of this whole site? Here's a phone number, here's an email, contact us, start buying comics at our shop, at their shop. So yeah, you're going to read some interesting articles, but the point is, look at this brand new Batman toy you want to buy. Get your latest manga here. Check out, uh, start a poll list. Have us buy your comics as soon as they um, are released. And so this read more is one, one thing to think about. It's very easy to do. Uh, so this is giving people choice.
give people the choice to read more of your article. If it interests them, On WordPress also, let's see, I don't have it listed explicitly anywhere in here, but this might be a good idea to then also mention the concept of subscriptions. Uh, set up a way for people to subscribe to your blog. WordPress makes that pretty easy. It's a couple of buttons that will activate. WordPress will then have a system that they'll take care of pretty much that if someone really likes your articles, uh, they can subscribe and as soon as you write a new article, they'll get an email that says, Victor's, Victor's Bakery published a new article. If I, this goes with the read more, because if I set up an article with read more, it'll send them a snippet of of that part, that preview text. Then from their email they can click to read more and it goes back to the website. If you send people your whole article in their inbox, they might read it and then they're done and they move on with their day. No incentive to come back to your website. If you give them a snippet and they're interested, they'll click to read more, come back to your website and remember, oh, there's the, there's the buy now button. Set up a, a way for people to start to your blog. Send them only in a snippet. Wait to read more. So they can visit your site and complete the ultimate goal. I get that uh, Fry's Electronics newsletter every day, whatever they publish it. They publish it a lot, and there's so many enticements there of something new to buy. I can't buy it from the email, of course. I have to click the email link, it goes back to their website, and I click buy. So something that entices, something entices me to subscribe to their, to their newsletter, I get the latest from them. It's much more direct salesmanship or salesy your particular blog maybe again that comic blog of mine I'm not selling anything but if someone were to click on that ad maybe I would get a little bit of profit from it so bring him back to my site because the ad is not in the email the ad is on the site so when they see the snippet of the article back to the site read it maybe click on on an ad So the writing part, 10 points to ponder, doing as many as possible, of course. A lot to think about, but any general questions on this whole writing section? I'll say one more thing about subscriptions, and we'll do promoting. Um, why? Should they subscribe? WordPress makes it very easy to make the subscribe button. And I think it, it just simply says, subscribe to the blog. Why? Why am I going to give my email address away to, to some blog I don't know? Uh, people are wary. They don't want to get spam. We get too much spam. Why do I want to give my email away? I don't know if they're going to then resell my email and suddenly I'll get a lot of spam. So by saying simply subscribe, that's not enough of an enticement. I have to think in terms of what's in it for them. What, how can I word that in that little box and we can see how to do it. What, how can I word it to entice people to give me your email, to subscribe? So better yet, a better way would be, for example, keep up to date, subscribe. I could say, want the latest news? Subscribe. Say, um, 
subscribe for our exclusive marketing newsletter whatever whatever it is subscribe for our exclusive stock market stock market analysis newsletter that's what that's what I'm writing in these articles perhaps in these blog posts subscribe for our exclusive marketing newsletter any way you want to write it that's much more enticing than give me your email question is it advisable to mention we will not sell this your email address Yes, most likely in the about screen or if it fits in that little area where they can subscribe. Yes, make it obvious to them that we won't, uh, the, you, sites often have a privacy policy and such. In the privacy policy I could have a little section that explains that. By you agreeing to subscribe to our newsletter, we agree that we will not resell your address and your site is safe, uh, your address is safe and we will never spam you. So that also helps to allay those fears about why would I give you my email. And you could put right in there that they have a choice of a monthly uh, the di uh, digest. And the digest. The that default in WordPress, I believe, is as it happens. I believe we have to activate another feature for it to become the digest. But yes, there is a way to make it daily, or as it happens, or digest. To not overwhelm people because people can then easily unsubscribe and then you've lost them as a marketing avenue. So we've thought about what we're writing, we've written a bunch, no one is still no one is visiting our site. Here's then more things to think about. Promoting social for them, social for you. Social for them. Make sure your readers can easily share to their Facebook, their Twitter, their Pinterest, their Google+, their Instagram, whatever. If your content is good enough, people will want their friends to see, thus turning them into advertisers for you. If I look at Investor Junkie, I read a particular article, Why I Don't Budget, and the three things you should focus on instead. That's such a great article, I want to share it. And it shows here, 24 shares to Facebook. 15 to Twitter, 9 to LinkedIn, either it doesn't have any or it doesn't show it, email, over to Reddit, over on the Rising Sun Comics site, okay, here's the uh, Doctor Strange article, and then there's um, at the bottom here, okay, you read the article, you loved it, tell your friends about it on Facebook, Tumblr, Pinterest, and more. That's free advertising. Make it easy. For your readers to give you free advertising. Activate the social sharing feature of your site. A WordPress site, it's basically we turn it on we'll see where. We'll, and we'll activate the social networks and people then can easily share. Um, maybe I'm only getting like 10 hits a month to my site. But, what, but suddenly one person that visited my site has a thousand subscribers on Twitter. And they like my article so much they clicked the tweet button and they tweeted my article to a thousand of their followers. Suddenly much more traffic than the normal that I was getting. And maybe one of those followers of that person on Twitter had 5,000 followers. And he retweeted her tweet of my article, and now it's growing exponentially. So much free advertising going off to social media. If you take the social media class, we go into this into a lot of detail, but the whole concept of social media is a free marketing tool. You write these great articles, but no one knows you exist. As you promote yourself for free or paid on social media, you can reach more people. That's why people are trying to get so many followers on all of these networks. More followers on a social network equals a captive audience. Followers in a social network are or is the target 
audience. Someone follows someone on Facebook, someone follows someone on Instagram, etc. Because they care about what they're sharing, they, they want to see more of it. And we have to be careful about balancing the, the fun stuff with the, with the sales stuff. But take the social media class and we go into more detail there. At the very least, make it easy for people to share it to their social media. That helps your promotion. On the flip side, are you sharing your posts on your social media? That assumes you have social media. That assumes you have Twitter. That assumes you have Instagram or any of the other networks. Um, there's so many to work with, and in the social networking class we talk about it in detail, but to say it in here, this would be the order that I would think about using Facebook, uh, using social media. Facebook number one. Twitter, number two. Google Plus, number three. Actually, I would say Pinterest and Google Plus are tied. Number three. Um, there's Instagram, of course. Uh, it has such a larger market also. If we're just talking in terms of size, we would put Instagram second as opposed to Twitter. But each one of these has their own nuances and techniques and all of that. So it's not really the best way to rank them. The short answer that I give is use them all. But that's a lot to ask for. So if you want the short, short answer, get on Facebook. Oh. But that's a long answer because Facebook changes their algorithm all the time. And actually, Facebook is making it harder for a business nowadays to reach an audience. Facebook is actively making it harder for a business to reach an audience nowadays. What do we do? Take my social media class number one. Question. Uh, where does YouTube fall into that? Again, any of these networks that you're on is going to be good. But if you're going to use YouTube, what do you do on YouTube? You share video. If I don't have a video to share, I just wrote an article, I can't share it to YouTube. Is there a way, though, if you do have a video, like yours, you have video in your article, mm -hmm. is there a way, um, I'm sure I can take your plug maybe, to, to link? to your blog from your YouTube video, like back backwards? There is. If uh, Let me load up one here. So I have uh, most of the blogs that I have here are just kind of a little snippet to get you to watch the video. And so you're over here, and I've also got a link over here. Follow me on Periscope. But let's say I went to look at the article, actually, I mean, I went to look at Montreal the video a team of chefs. at YouTube. They use fresh well, ingredients within to create the description, meals, I could add links. On the video we itself, it right I could add door. links. And so people that find me via YouTube uh, then have an avenue to, for them to get back to my site. No, I was just showing that to show you that if I'm on YouTube, okay. that can link you back. But the way I've got it is I can play it in the article itself. There's no right or wrong answer. Both will work because it'll automatically be on YouTube for the people on YouTube. And then I have it embedded on my article here if I want people to read it here for them to click on some brevity for me to read it have it in the net. Um, also, if they view it on actually YouTube and there's articles there and there's ads there and they click there, I profit from that as well. You can profit from your YouTube videos as well. So the, the answer is you have to be there in as most places as possible. Do as much as possible. Once you kind of set things up, the ball gets rolling and it starts into itself or it has to become pretty close to part of the set. Like that. I have a question on yes. social media. So can you go back to your um, your website that you have up there? So I noticed that you have all the social media links here. Mm -hmm. Are all of those active? Yes. Okay. So you have those there and then I noticed at the bottom you also have social media links. Were those just for sharing? Exactly. The ones here, which says share, this is the social media for them. When someone visits my article, they I want them to share it to their social media. If they want to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing on social media, here's my social media. That's the point number two right here. Social for them, social for you. So on all of these, yeah, I post to Twitter, I post to Google+, Plus, I use Instagram, some less than others. I haven't posted to DeviantArt in a little while, I haven't posted to Pinterest in a little while. I post to SoundCloud every week. Uh, I just posted a YouTube video the other day. 
I try to do that once a month, so I have my own goals. This just happens. I have something to share, I share. Twitter's really fast, and Google Plus too. Instagram, I'm kind of doing like once a week or once every week and a half or something. Uh, that This one often feeds into, in, into Flickr, so these are two linked together. I hate Facebook, so I go onto it not that often, but I still use it. <laughs> and then YouTube, again, I like that one, but I, it's so much more work, it's like once a month. And SoundCloud, well, that's every week, that's a lot of work, but I like, so far I like doing it every week. What's the tea icon? The tea is t Tumblr. That one I haven't added in a little while, and what's the last thing I added? Um, oh, my cat. So six months ago. <laughs> not it's not all about comics, every single thing, but the way I like to use Tumblr is I put these weird animations, um, and I just share them once in a while. See, that one was a year ago. I haven't used Tumblr as much, and yes, this is yet another popular social network, uh, but. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's however you want to use it. I wonder what he's listening to on his headphones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it can be a lot of work. It can be a, a lot of effort. That, uh, that, that I've shown there, that's all my personal fun stuff off to the side after I've got all my work done. There's a lot of other work to do with all of these other clients. Depending how the client hires us, you know, for, for over here, this one is just that I'm writing their articles. They deal with their Twitter and they run their Snapchat and they do all of that. So it depends on, on what kind of deal we have. Yes? So we literally have to go and sh uh, not share, uh, post our blog on each of our little things. There's no way for us to link our. Uh, WordPress, WordPress can or? automatically. Oh, it's called okay. Publicize. Uh, so I'll say here when we when we get into WordPress to actually do it uh, the easy way use WordPress publicize feature to auto share to your social media every time you write a new article Every time you write a new article, you can activate the Publicize button. Once you click Publish on WordPress, it will automatically send it to Twitter, send it to Facebook, okay. send it to Tumblr. Not every network. It can't send it to YouTube, of course. They can't send it to Instagram, because the only way to share on Instagram is through the Instagram app. You can't share on through the web yet. So that's the social for you, assuming you have some social media. So, share, con share your content on your relevant social media channels. Share a link to your blog post on your personal LinkedIn, if it, if it, if it is relevant, or from the company Twitter, or the Instagram, or whatever social network you have. As you build an audience, one of our clients, she's a jewelry designer. She loves using Instagram. She loves sharing. She makes the jewelry. She takes the photo. She shares on Instagram. She gets a lot of likes on Instagram. And in Instagram, she's writing there. And she's adding a link to buy it on the website. And so she's a superstar on, on LinkedIn. Um, uh, not LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, but as I wrote here, yes, there's a lot of them to work with. And the short answer is, is Facebook, but it's a long answer because Facebook is making it actively more difficult for people to, to use it, companies to use it effectively. The short answer is Facebook ads. So how is that true? Yeah. You can have a separate page for your business and why is it making it more difficult? If you want to tap into the, the millions of people that use Facebook, if you want to advertise your page on Facebook, Facebook makes it a little bit harder unless you're actually paying to reach more people on Facebook. That's why I'm saying they're making it difficult. In the old days, if you simply clicked like on someone's Facebook page, you would see all the stuff. Now, clicking a like still doesn't show your stuff to them. Now you also have to engage in boosting posts and Facebook ads and all of that stuff. And it's working. Facebook's making a lot of money off of people, businesses, advertising their business on Facebook. And because they're the 800-pound grill of social media with about 1.6 billion users, they can do it. People will complain, but they can't. But people can't do anything about it except quit Facebook, and that never works. They've still been getting bigger and bigger. So does it end up being kind of expensive then? 
No, it could be it could be uh, pretty effective by paying one dollar. One dollar could help you reach a hundred people if you have no likes on Facebook. Even one dollar can help you reach potentially a hundred people. It's still up to you that what you shared on Facebook was so great that they click the buy button, but at least Facebook will show you to a hundred people where you were starting off with zero. With one dollar. With more dollars, you get more result. And they'll suggest to you might maybe start with twenty dollars, thirty dollars, ten dollars, but you can get some traction with one dollar at a time. Related to promoting and building awareness and traffic is comments. However, I believe comments, I personally believe comments are in a transition phase, so this may change at some point. Mm -hmm. Allowing people to comment on your posts could help generate more traffic. Remember to moderate the comments, however. The default of WordPress is that anyone can write anything on, on your, on your, or the, the good thing about WordPress is that anyone can reply to your what you write. But the bad thing is that anyone can reply to what you write. Mm -hmm. So any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your article. Any spammer can write it, spam comments on your articles. Notice these ones that I'm showing over here right away. Submit a comment. The default is that is turned on. You can turn it on or off. Or better yet, you can set up the system that nothing will show up until it's approved. And WordPress has some very good spam fighting features. They're getting better all the time. But spammers are also getting craftier all the time. And so when we get into WordPress, we'll see either you can turn on or off all your comments. You can turn on or off comments per article. Or better yet, set up moderation. The problem there then is you're going to get emails, especially if you're a popular site, you're going to get emails that say, John wrote a new comment on your article. Approve, spam, delete. So from my email, I'll click approve and it'll show up. I read it, oh, that's spam. I click spam, it never shows up again. I can delete it, meaning that it might be off topic. If I'm writing about food and then someone is writing some comment here that it's not negative, it's not spam, but it's off topic. Why are they writing about this personal anecdote that really doesn't have anything to do with what I wrote? You can just delete it. Don't let the comments show up. Let other of their comments show up, but that one's off topic. And that's perfectly fine to do. It's your property. It's your blog. You can manage it how you want. You can keep it on topic. If I'm writing, uh, you know, on, on pet pet articles and such and someone and I'm writing an article about cat food and then someone wrote there yes that's that's uh, really good but I also recommend the blah 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 XYZ dog food well that's off topic I don't want that on that cat article so I'll delete that blog I mean that dog comment and that's fine it's my property it's my blog I paid for it it's my I can manage it how I want so that's why I'm saying this could be in transition um, it could be valuable, but it's very easy for a website to be overrun with spam unless you're moderating it. On your site, comments might be useful, especially if you moderate them. The point is somebody spamming is just so they can get more traffic to their site? Yeah, creating backlinks. Mm -hmm. uh, an unsuspecting or less savvy web user reads an article and it sounds, I mean, reads your article and reads a reply. And that reply sounds so legitimate. And they click the link and it takes them to cheapauthenticrolexwatches.com. So they're trying, those spammers are just trying to get links back to their site to trick people to sell them something or infect them with spyware or something. So that's why we have to deal with moderation. On the, yes? With that being said, can you, um, can you go in and just delete like a batch of comments? Like, I, want, I don't want any comments that have links in them, for instance. Can you do stuff like that? To various degrees. Uh, WordPress, depending on our spam features or settings, we can set it that if, if a particular 
comment has more than two links, just delete it automatically because oftentimes spammers do that. Mm -hmm. They write an article and they put five links. So WordPress can catch that and automatically delete posts or comments that are overly linked. But yes, I can sele select more than one and delete as many as I want. You can even go in and edit people's comments. So if you have the time and an effort, you can go in and go to that comment and remove the links in the comment that you don't want. It's even more work and I've already got a lot more to do. Now on another site, comments can be very useful. This is the opposite. Do I want people to come to my site and comment? Maybe. Do I want to go to other people's sites and comment? Yes. Let me show you here. Brown Eye Baker. Speaking of bakeries, brown eyed, brown -eyed baker .com. Here's a here's a blog about sweet, savory, sinful. Um, every Friday they have you know kind of off-topic things here, but then over here here is wacky cake and an article a recipe all about wacky cake, thick and chewy chocolate chip cookies, fancy pants coleslaw. So food not not always baking. So. Blue Apron, they're reviewing it and giving a special offer, so there's an affiliate link. The Weekend Dish and other Friday things. Okay, so there's a bunch of articles on a bunch of food-related topics. This one was posted yesterday. If I click on an article, you know, read more, I see some great pictures, read a lot of text, here's an internal link to one of their other recipes, pictures, text, very detailed. I can shoot these kinds of photos with my own phone, especially ones out of focus. And then I'm going to see all of these links. This one's going off to Amazon. This is an affiliate link. You need vanilla bean paste? Click here and buy vanilla bean paste. Using our link, we're profiting from it. Um, ads. Try the new signature Sriracha Burger. Guess what? If I click on that, this company profits a bit. If, if I actually do need to update my Cox internet access, I'll click on that, they profit a little bit. Um, they really want you to click on Cox. Uh, so what I'm getting at then, at the end of the article, okay, so then right here, look at how, okay, I don't want to read the whole thing. Give me the recipe. Here's the recipe in its own section with a heading, and they've set this to print or email this directly free advertising right there. I'm sure that once you email that, it'll automatically have the link back to their site. There's also the way right here, share it. 52 Facebook shares and 491 shares elsewhere. Share this off to Pinterest. Pinterest is very visual. Uh, demographics show that it's a, it's a very female-friendly social network. More, more women use Pinterest than men, statistically. So I could share that recipe to my friends over on Pinterest. Free advertising for them. They, I think they're selling a book. They're selling a cookbook. So they're giving away a lot of great free content, but they're selling a cookbook. And at the very least, if you click on, if you click on one of these ads, they profit from that. So the purpose of the site is um, you know, advertising and such. Related to my point right here, about comments, 47 responses to Wacky Cake. Now, based on these three results, Amy, Sally, and D have commented. Sally is doing it right, and Sally and Amy, I mean, Amy is doing it right, and Sally and D are not quite. Do you see what I'm talking about? One of them posted a comment right, and the others didn't. Underlined so that it becomes a link? Exactly. Okay. Amy's name is underlined and with a link back to pressure cookie pressurecookerrecipes.com. Sally is not an active link. And neither is D. So what I'm saying over here regarding on another site comments might be very useful if you link back. Link back to your site carefully. You can very easily put a... D could have written something here and, and put simply a link to her, to her site back. Most likely this is moderated. 
the moderator then decides, I don't like that comment, don't show it, delete it, or mark you as a spammer. This one was added automatically to her name, and on WordPress the default is that if you comment on an article, it's asking you, what's your name, what's your email, what's your website, which is optional. I'm going to say, if it ever asks you for your website, make it optional, make it required. Because oftentimes, if you add a website, when you're adding a comment, your website, your name will be an active link back to your website. Mm -hmm. So on this one, read this article, have something to say about it, they're going to write something. The name and the email is there to help prevent spammers. Website is optional. Don't make it optional. Put your website there, because that'll give you a link back. Some of you saw that. That looks like a link. What if I click? Look at that. I just gave Amy some traffic back to her site, pressurecookrecipes.com. Whereas D didn't do that, maybe doesn't want that, maybe doesn't know to do that, maybe they're just writing to agree with what's going on here, commenting. That's perfectly fine. But what I'm saying is, so again, Mer Mary or Merle didn't, D, Mookie didn't, Julie didn't, Anna didn't, Jean, Jean did, Sweetie's Unique, Sweetie's Unique Treats.com. So this one is a, is a fine line or a tightrope, because I'm saying, if you link back to your site, it's going to be valuable if you link back to your site carefully. So add your address in the website box if available. If it's not available, if there's no uh, little box there for you, for, you to website, for you to add your website, then instead, if no box available, write an on-topic positive real reply to the post and include a careful way to uh, add your own link. Oftentimes when you write an article, I mean you write a comment on someone's article, if you type your web address, <clears throat> it becomes an active link. Sometimes, depending on their site, as you're writing, they might have buttons to make your text bold, to make your text red, to insert a link. It depends on the site. But I'm saying here, you wrote, you wrote, you read an article, you write a reply, and you might add a link to your site somewhere there. I could say, that's a great recipe, and it really takes me back to my childhood. This is one that I like to build or to cook. This is my variation on your wacky cake. Hopefully you'll check it out. And then I've got a link back to my own recipe of wacky cakes. And so that's the way to be judicious. That's the way to be careful because they are active. Michelle is one of the moderators or the owner of the site or someone. Someone is active here. Hers is colored differently. That's an official representative of this site. This site, uh, all comments are approved, number one. And number two, the, pe the moderators are active. Let me know how to compare side by side. So they said something. She's got her own site. It's, it's been approved, her comment. And so this one could be the complex one. The way I would say is do research to find blogs on the same or similar topic of your own blog and then comment as noted above to help build a presence 
online not only on your site but on other related websites because a spammer can create a website and fill it with a thousand articles but it's an island unto of itself if you create your website and write 10 articles and then you go to other related websites I'm a realtor and I want to get people to hire me to, to sell a house and I'm gonna write all of these articles about pitfalls to avoid with your first mortgage blah 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 and I go to other related websites about finance about realty about homeowners uh, about you know first-time home buyers and such and I comment on other people's articles related to what my topic is and I put links back to my website the search engines see all of that again the search engines are on 24 hours a day analyzing everything that they every single website that they can all over the world and the search engine can process a thousand websites in half a second probably more in less time and so it can see oh Victor's Bakery has a website and Victor's Bakery has commented on Brown Eyed Baker and commented on uh, the mommyfoodblogger.com and commented on this website and that website and they're all related and it's on topic and it's not spam that's good let's elevate their site because their topic they're they're on topic they're an authority they're real they're not a spammer conversely if you're just going to a bunch of websites and simply copying and pasting your link back to your site over and over and over with no positive content the, sp the websites the search engines will say that's a spam website they're just putting they're just forcing their link onto everywhere that they can like a spammer you're a spammer I believe you're not a spammer but the search engine won't and the search engine is guilty until proven innocent so following these rules and knowing what they are will help you in the long term Lastly, guest blogging. Offer to blog on other people's relevant sites. Add your expertise to their site. Your author page should have links back to your own blog or social media, thus driving traffic to you. As you become more well-known on your niche, in your niche, this will help your SEO. We're seeing that over on Investor Junkie, that I read an article, and so Larry wrote this. Let's see another example. Asset allocation for retirement. Let's see who wrote this. Larry. Uh, let's see. Five steps to create successful financial plan. Here we go. Uh, Miranda. So Miranda wrote this. Her name is an active link. I click there. Her author page. Miranda is a journalistically trained freelance writer, etc., etc. Visit her Google profile. So on Investor Junkie, with whatever sort of agreement they have, she has on her own page here. Maybe they're paying her per article, but at the very least, here's a link back to her own website. So if you go off and write articles, for someone else, depending on how they, um, depending on how, what kind of contract you have or whatever, you can um, have links back to your own site. I think all the ones here are just by one person. Maybe they're, they're probably ghostwriters. Um, but if you take the time and effort, if you do the research of related websites on Victor's Bakery, I could go to Get in Contact, go to the contact page or the about page of this site and say, you know, I really like your site. I've been reading it a long time. Do you accept guest bloggers? I'd be happy to write for you. They may say no, thank you. They may say yes. And then set up some sort of deal. Get it in writing, of course. And then you'll be contributing to their site, piggybacking on all of this traffic. And if they've allowed an author page, well, you can get links back to your site, traffic back to your site, piggybacking on their 
popularity. So research relevant sites, ask to blog for them, or set up some kind of contract. Get an author page and fill it with your links. The big downside of this also, uh, however, now then is now you've got to write stuff for other people. I'm having a hard time writing for myself, and I've gotten into the situation I'm writing for someone else. So depending on what kind of deal you have with them, a once a month article, a once a quarter article, whatever, people are sites are always looking for content original content. And so if you've got a once a quarter deal with them, whenever you post something here, you're going to get that bump in traffic because if they're popular, that'll trickle down to you. Yes? And generally they don't, they don't pay you for that. It's a quick pro pro. It depends. Uh, it really depends. That's why you're going to you're going to reach out to them uh, and try to figure out what kind of deal. It could be quick pro quo. Um, or it could be paid, but it's going to be up to you who you're who you're working with. Some that are more versed in this and, and savvy and such might want to just do a you know service for service trade, uh, and others might say, okay, we'll set up a contract and we'll pay you for this and whatever. It depends on what who you're trying to connect with. So that one's, of course, totally optional, but that could be over in the promoting section. Maybe you've already built a stable of 10 articles, and now you're going to shift your focus a bit into all of this promotion stuff. This week, I'm going to tweet about that article I wrote two months ago. That's fine. In those two months, you might have gotten new followers. They haven't seen those articles yet. It's okay to repurpose your articles once in a while. Maybe update them a little bit and share them again. Maybe spend a day going to different sites and commenting and adding your link back to your site. Maybe you'll you'll spend one or two months in doing the guest blogging stuff. But all of this in general, the big picture is content. It's content for the search engines to find, to rank you, for you to get traffic. A good book on blogging. I have this in the syllabus, but if you go look up the how to blog for profit, and I forgot to write the, the whole article, the whole name. It's in the main syllabus, but it's uh, how to blog for profit without losing your soul or selling your soul without selling your soul. Oh, I just realized soul is an anagram for lose. Soul. Soul, the other soul. This is the one by Ruth Sukup. Even if you're not trying to blog, uh, profit from your blog, there's various. There's a lot of great various concepts in here about uh, strategy, what to do, what not to do, and all of that. And any class, any tech class especially, this stuff changes all the time. And so I like this book, but some things might eventually go out of style because the search engines have to adapt and evolve because spammers take over a particular concept or topic and then the good guys, us, then we have to try different tactics. And so the search engines change. It's very affordable, $15.99, or you get the used one for $9.71. Well, apparently, you get if you get a Kindle subscription, you can get it for free. If you get <coughs> any of these Kindle ebooks, you don't need a Kindle device. Any iPhone or Android device has the Kindle app that you can read Kindle books on. So you don't need a real Kindle to read these. And if you get a Kindle book over on Amazon, you can go to read.amazon.com and you can read all your Kindle books on a website. 
So I like digital books because you can look them up easily and take them wherever you want. I still love real physical books and all of that, but for tech stuff, I like to have the, the digital one because then I can find and search inside of the book and make bookmarks a lot easier and always carry it with me. And there's many other books on the same topic. You'll easily see here. This is how to make money blogging. How I replaced my day job with my blog. For every success story, there is the opposite. This one's 538. It's also very highly rated. Give it more ratings than this. I always go by, with any ratings on Yelp, Amazon, whatever, I always try to focus on the ones that have high ratings, but a lot of rate, a lot of raters. If it's got seven people giving it five stars, that's not as meaningful as 70 people giving it four stars. I would go for the four star one with 70 people chiming in, rather than the five-star result with only seven people saying something, because I could, I could find seven friends to give me a great review. I can't find 70 people to give me a great review for free. All right, so that was our big discussion on this. Next time what we will do is we will actually log into WordPress. Last week, if you weren't here, we created a website at WordPress.com. Next time, we will log back into WordPress.com and apply these things. You can try to start applying them on your own between next time we meet. We will do it together, because oftentimes then we have other nuances that we get to as we do it. Uh, if you have already an existing website that is a blog, you can go ahead and use it. You don't have to have WordPress to learn all of this, but I focus on WordPress a lot because it's got the largest market share. And if you go to WordPress.com, you can create a free WordPress site right away. As I said previously at the top here, though, I recommend you get it at a real provider. Um, very, very briefly, that would be places like GoDaddy, Bluehost, get a real provider, provider like um, DreamHost, um, GoDaddy, Bluehost. <coughs> These are ones that I've personally dealt with, so I can vouch for them. There's going to be many other ones out there that exist that I don't know them all. So I can't say anything about them. If you'd like to know if it's good or bad, search for the name of that company and the keyword testimonial. Or search for the name of that company and the keyword reviews. And then you'll get hopefully reviews from people that say don't go with DreamHost because XYZ. Don't go with GoDaddy because here's my problem. I personally have used GoDaddy since about 2001, and overall I've been like 98% happy with it. I had a client that I've had since about 2001. She had terrible results with GoDaddy, moved to Bluehost about seven years ago. She's been perfectly happy with it. I've had clients that I've worked with HostMonster as well. They're, they've all got their version of it, but they're all just going to give you service for various prices and features. So we don't talk about it in a lot of detail in the lecture because there's so many possibilities. Any one of those should work. Yes? Okay, so say I have a website that I built on my Squarespace. Mm -hmm. Can I like switch that and put it on something else? Yes. You can transfer your site from any provider to any other provider. It's like when I uh, change companies. I, I want to get away from AT&T and go to T-Mobile. I can bring my number. You can do that with, with your websites as well. Some of them are easier to do than others, just like with the phone, but you should be able to go from any company to any company. Now, if your site is working, I wouldn't go through the hassle of changing it. I believe Squarespace gives you the ability to do blogging. So everything that we've talked about here can be applied to Squarespace, just the buttons will be different and the interface. But if you want to um, Change it for various reasons? You can. Any other general questions and then we'll wrap up for the day. That was a long lecture. Any general questions? Okay, I'll turn the printer back on in just a moment. I will put my notes that I just wrote back into the network folder. I'm going to upload this whole lecture. 
uh, to the to the video site. Send me an email requesting the videos if you'd like. We'll do it again next week.